Tuesday. Even though Shirag left me off the hook last night, mom wasn't done with me yet. She wasn't really that mad about the joke or how I treated Shirag. She was just mad that I lied about it. So mom told me she'll drown me for a month if she catches me lying again. And that means I better watch my step because mom's not going to forget what she said. When it comes to my screw-ups, mom has a memory like an elephant. That's the second time you tracked mud into the kitchen. First time six years ago. Last year, mom caught me lying and I paid the price for it. Mom made a gingerbread house a week before Christmas and she put it on top of the refrigerator. She said nobody was allowed to touch it until Christmas Eve dinner. But I couldn't help myself. So every night, I'd sneak downstairs and pick off a little piece of the gingerbread house. I tried to only eat a tiny piece each time so mom wouldn't notice. It was really hard to limit myself to one gumdrop or one little crumb of gingerbread each night, but I managed to do it anyway. I didn't know how much I had actually eaten until mom took it down off the fridge on Christmas Eve. When mom accused me of eating all the candy, I denied it, but I wish I just fessed up right away because that fib totally backfired on me. Mom had just gotten hired to write a parenting column for the local newspaper, and she was always looking for material, so that incident pretty much made me into a local celebrity. Susan Heffley, when your child is being deceptive, The weeks leading up to Christmas can be a source of stress for a child and can harbor unforeseen temptations. My son Gregory found that, you know, now that I think about it, mom isn't exactly squeaky clean when it comes to being honest herself. I remember when I was a kid and she found out I wasn't brushing my teeth every night. She faked a call to the dentist office And that call is the reason why I still brush my teeth four times a day. Dr. Crates, do you have dentures for little boys? Oh, only wooden ones? I guess that will have to do then. Friday. Well, it's been three days and I've kept my promise to mom. I've been 100% honest the whole time. And believe it or not, it's not that hard. In fact... It's kind of liberating. I've been in a couple situations already where I was a lot more honest than I would have been a week ago. For example, the other day, I had a conversation with this neighborhood kid named Sean Snella. When I grow up, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Think again, Sean. Neither one of your parents is taller than five foot two, and you're the only 200 pound six year old I know. Ah, I cannot tell a lie. And yesterday, Rowley's family had a birthday party for his grandfather. Next year, I want a chocolate cake. That is, if you're alive next year. Hey, I'm just trying to be realistic. Most people don't seem to appreciate a person as honest as me. So don't ask me how George Washington ever got to be president. Saturday. Today I answered the phone, and it was Mrs. Gilman from the PTA looking for mom. I tried to hand her the phone, but she whispered for me to tell Mrs. Gilman that she wasn't home. I couldn't tell if mom was trying to trick me into lying or what, but there was no way I was going to break my honesty streak over something as dumb as this. So I made mom go out on the front porch before I said a word to Mrs. Gilman. My mother is not inside the house right now. And from the look mom gave me when she came back in the house, I kind of get the feeling she's not going to hold me to that honesty pledge anymore. Monday. Today was career day at school. They have career day every year to get us kids to start thinking about our future. They brought in a bunch of adults who had all these different jobs. I think the idea is that us kids will find out about a job we like 
and then we'll know what we want to be when we grow up. But what really happens is that you just find out which jobs to rule out. And that's why I love being an electrical engineer. After the presentations, we had to fill out these questionnaires. The first question was, where do you see yourself in 15 years? I know exactly where I'll be in 15 years. In my pool, at my mansion, counting my money. But there weren't any check boxes for that option. The questionnaires are supposed to predict what kind of job you're going to have when you grow up. When I was finished, I looked up my job on the chart and I got clerk. Well, there must be something wrong with the way they set these forms up or something, because I don't know any clerks who are billionaires. Some other kids were unhappy with the jobs they ended up with too. But the teacher said, we shouldn't take these things too seriously. Well, try telling that to Edward Mealy. Last year, he got sanitation worker on his job chart, and the teachers have been treating him different ever since. Edward, could you please clean up the juice spill? Rowley got nurse on his job chart, and he seemed pretty happy about it. A couple of girls got nurse too, and they were chatting away with Rowley after class. Next year, I have to remember to sit next to Rowley and copy his job form so I can get in on some of that action. Saturday. Me and Roderick were just sitting around the house today, so Mom sent us over to Grandma's to rake her leaves. Mom said she'd pay us $100 in mom bucks for each bag we filled. Plus, Grandma said she'd give us hot chocolate after we were finished. I really didn't feel like working on a Saturday, but I needed the cash. Besides, Grandma makes really awesome hot chocolate. So we got some rakes and plastic bags from our garage and headed down to Grandma's house. I took one side of the yard and Roger took the other. But 10 minutes into the job, Roger came over and told me I was doing everything all wrong. No, no, no. Roger said I was putting away too many leaves in each bag and that if I just tied the bag closer to the bottom, I could get done a lot quicker. See? Now this is the kind of advice you're supposed to get from your older brother. After Roderick showed me that trick, we went through bags like nobody's business. In fact, we ran out in half an hour. Grandma didn't seem too happy about forking over the hot chocolate when we came inside. But like they say, a deal's a deal. Monday. Ever since career day, Rowley has been spending lunch with a bunch of girls who sit at the corner table in the cafeteria. I guess the group of them is like the future nurses of America or something. Don't ask me what they talk about over there. They just whisper and giggle like a bunch of first graders. Psst, psst, psst. <laughs> All I can say is they better not be talking about me. You remember how I said Roderick is the only one who knows about that really embarrassing thing that happened to me over the summer? Well, Rowley knows the second most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me, and I really don't need him digging it back up. Back in fifth grade, we had a project in Spanish where we had to do a skit in front of the class, and my partner was Rowley. We had to do the whole skit in Spanish. Rowley asked me, what I would do for a candy bar, and I said I'd stand on my head. But when I tried to do a headstand, I tipped over, and my rear end went right through the wall. Estario Prado and me, ay, ay, ay. Well, the school never bothered to fix the hole, so for the rest of my time in elementary school, my butt print was on display in Mrs. Gonzalez's room. And if Rowley's spreading that story around, believe me, I'm going to tell the whole world who ate the cheese. Wednesday. Today, I realized that if I wanted to know what Rowley and those girls are talking about at lunch, all I have to do is read his diary. I'll bet he's writing down 
all sorts of juicy gossip in that thing. The problem is, Rowley's diary is locked. So even if I had a hold of it, I wouldn't have any way to open it. But then, I thought of something. All I had to do was buy the same exact diary he has, and then I'd have a key. So, I went to the bookstore tonight and got the last one on the shelf. I just hope buying this thing was worth it, because I had to cash in half of my mom bucks to pay for it. And I don't think dad was too thrilled with the idea of me buying a sweet secrets diary either. Thursday. After phys ed today, I saw that Rowley accidentally left his diary on the bench. So, when the coast was clear, I used my new key on his diary, and sure enough, it worked. I opened it up and started reading. I flipped through the rest of the book to see if my name was in there anywhere, but it was just page after page of this garbage. After seeing what's going on in Rowley's head, I'm kind of starting to wonder why I'm even friends with him in the first place. Saturday. Things at home have been really good for about a week. Roderick has the flu, so he doesn't have the energy to bother me. And Manny has been at Grandma's, so I've had the TV all to myself. Yesterday, Mom and Dad made a surprise announcement. They said they were going away for the night and that me and Roderick were in charge of the house. That was some pretty big news because mom and dad have never left me and Roderick on our own before. I think they've always been afraid that if they go away, Roderick is going to have a huge party and trash the house. But with Roderick knocked out with the flu, they must have seen their big chance. So after mom gave us a speech about responsibility and trust and all that, they took off. The second mom and dad walked out the door, Roderick jumped off of the couch and picked up the phone. Then he called every friend he knew and told them he was having a party. I thought about calling mom and dad to tell them what Roderick was up to, but I've never actually been to a high school party before. I was curious. I decided to just keep my mouth shut and soak it all in. Roderick told me to get some folding tables out of the basement and bring a couple of bags of ice out of the downstairs freezer. Roderick's friends started to show up around 7 o'clock, and before you knew it, there were cars parked up and down the street. The first person to walk through the door was Roderick's friend Ward. A bunch more people started showing up after that, and Roderick told me we were going to need more tables, so I went downstairs to get them. But as soon as I stepped foot in the basement, I heard the door lock behind me. I pounded on the door, but Roger just cranked up the music to drown me out, so I was stuck down there. Man, I should have known Roger would go and pull something like that. I guess it was pretty dumb of me to think Roger was going to let me in on the action. It sounded like it was a pretty wild party. I think some girls even showed up at one point, but I couldn't be too sure because it was hard to keep track of what was going on from just looking at the bottoms of people's shoes. The party was still going strong at 2 a.m., but that's when I gave up. I spent the night on one of the spare beds in the basement, even though there were no blankets on it. I practically froze to death, but there was no way I was going to use a blanket from Roderick's bed. Somebody must have unlocked the basement door overnight, because when I woke up this morning, it was open. And when I walked upstairs, it looked like a tornado had touched down in the family room. The last of Roderick's friends wasn't gone until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And once everyone left, Roderick told me I had to help him clean up. I told Roderick he was out of his mind if he thought I was helping him. But then Roderick said that if he got busted for the party, he was taking me down with him. He said if I didn't help him clean up the mess, he would tell all my friends about the thing that happened to me this summer. I couldn't believe Roderick would play dirty like that. But I could tell he was serious, so I just got to work. 
Mom and dad were supposed to be back at 7 o'clock, and we still had a ton of work to do. It wasn't easy to erase all the evidence of the party, because Roderick's friends had left trash in all these crazy places. At one point, when I went to make myself a bowl of cereal, a half-eaten piece of pizza fell out of the box. By 6.45, we had things pretty well wrapped up. I went upstairs to take a shower, and that's when I saw the message written on the inside of the bathroom door. I tried scrubbing the writing off with soap and water, but whoever wrote that thing must have used a permanent marker. Mom and Dad were going to be home any minute, so I thought we were doomed. But then Roderick had a genius idea. He said we could switch the door out and replace it with the closet door from the basement. So we got some screwdrivers and went to work. We finally managed to get the door off its hinges, and then we carried it downstairs. Then, we got the closet door from Roderick's room in the basement and brought it upstairs. We made it with no time to spare. Mom and Dad's car rolled into the driveway, right when we were tightening the last screw. You could tell they were pretty relieved the house hadn't burned down while they were away. I don't think we're totally out of the woods just yet, because with the way Dad was poking around tonight... I'm sure it won't be long before he figures out about the party. Well, Roderick might have lucked out this time, but all I can say is he should be glad Manny wasn't there to see the party. Manny is a huge tattletale. In fact, he's been telling on me ever since he could talk. He's even told on me for stuff I did before he could talk. When I was a kid, I broke the sliding glass door in the family room. Mom and Dad didn't have any evidence that I was the one who did it, so they couldn't peg it on me. And I was in the clear, but Manny was there when it happened, and two years later, he squealed on me. Bubby throwed walk at Big Window. So after Manny started talking, I had to worry about all the bad things he saw me do when he was a baby. I used to be a big tattletale myself, until I learned my lesson. One time, I told on Roderick for saying a bad word. Mom asked me which word he said, so I spelled it out. And it was a long one, too. Well, I ended up getting a bar of soap in my mouth for knowing how to spell a bad word. And Roderick got off scot-free. <laughs>